Good morning. These are certainly troubling times which we find ourselves. You know, some people say we're we're at a tipping point in American society. Uh, I don't know, I hope so. We're in a crucible. Oh. And how can we not how can we not not think about race today? I mean I'm sure every thinking person is is thinking about race and how do they fit in all this? But are we are we talking about it? It's a question, right? Are we able to talk about race and that's certainly bum banging it around in my head this morning as it has for many mornings since the George Floyd killing and before that uh, scores maybe even hundreds some names we know some we don't since 2014 when we found out for the first time that in our nation about a thousand people are killed every year by police you know, for a variety of reasons and you know not not all of them are illegitimate so hmm what is our role as as a people? I know what my role is as a as a Christian is that I am steeped in the idea that we are all created by God, that we are all, all created in God's image. And that's that's a pretty heavy load. I also know, you know, physiologically that. You know, if I was laying here on the trail, um, losing a lot of blood, and I got conveyed, I, I didn't, I didn't stop and ask uh, the uh, medical people, "Could you tell me uh, wh where that blood came from? Does it uh, come from a, a white person, or or or, or a black person, or, or what? I, I I need to know." Well, the fact is, you don't need to know because the blood of any human person is, is something that is going to save your life. <laughs> now you can't get another primate in there. You can't hook a chimpanzee down to the table and exchange blood. At least I don't think so. So I come with that predisposition that we are all one and from the theological position that it is God's dream for us that we would all be one Just like in the Christian tradition, we say, just like Jesus and the Father are one. Jesus and God. God, of course, doesn't have a gender. So, so we struggle. And, you know, when I write about need for justice and policing, we need to improve things. There's a lot of good cops out there. We need to support them. We need to give them the tools to, to do a good job. And we, yeah, yeah, we got to get rid of the bad cops because they influence others. And a lot of them are senior cops, are informal leaders, as I would suggest Derek Chauvin was in Minneapolis. A lot of work to do. But the argument I get back is that, well, well, David, I mean, please kill more white people than black people. What do you say about that? And I say, well, yeah, that's, that is true. I watch, I see the data. But I also know that somewhere between a third and maybe of a little higher of those thousand are, are people of color. In many cases, young black men. And if the population of African Americans in is around 10, 12 percent, then that that seems skewed. So I know there's a difference there. 
And then, then they say, well, yeah, but what about black on black crime? And yeah, that's right. There is a lot of black on black crime. And if we control for a socioeconomic status and opportunity, well, that certainly drops down a lot. One of the sad things about American life is that we have never really been able to integrate. Um, probably the military is the best example of that. When I joined the Marines, we were, we were a good you know, seven, eight years out of World War II and President Truman's decree to integrate the military. I've seen a lot of black female generals <laughs> recently. I think we've done a good job there. So people who are in the military, they're, they, are, they are put into work situations where they must work with people who are different from them. And even though a lot of our recruits come out of the southern states, they must learn how to work with people of color. Or they're out of the military. In our workplaces who have been in strong affirmative action, we have come together. We've, we work with more people who are different from us. But when we go home from work, and this is the part that troubles me, and troubles me in my own life as well. You know, we, we're not in social situations on a daily, weekly, or even monthly basis with people of color. You know, and I feel that absence. Certainly living rurally doesn't, doesn't help the situation. I don't have any black neighbors here, rurally. I've got a few friends from my days in martial arts and my time in the police, but, but not today as I, as I age. If I don't have a chance to wake up every day and walk and talk and commiserate and have joyful experiences with people of color, then then I really have to watch my attitudes, those unconscious biases. Well, that's what I'm struggling with this morning. I'm going to probably struggle with it tomorrow as well. And I, and I hope that you struggle with it too and come to some answers. You know, where do you stand? Because now it's going to be the time, brothers and sisters, where it's time to stand up. To stand up and speak out for what's right and to do something. This is our time, white America. Are we up for it? I think we are. God bless you as you go forth today. Bye-bye.